Hey everybody, it's Tim with Collect Jurassic, and I'm back with a Jurassic World Live Tour edition of Toy Reviews. Uh, we have a ton of stuff to review today. If you've been following us on social media, you know we went to the Jurassic World Live Tour show this past weekend. The show was awesome. Could not recommend it enough. I'm not going to give an in-depth review here in this video since we're focusing on the toys. But obviously, the show was a great time, and the merchandise booth was incredible. Uh, I could not buy everything there. Uh, if you want to see more photos of what was available, we do have an article up on collectjurassic.com with more photos. But for this review, we're going to be focusing on what uh, I was able to buy while I was there, which was still quite a lot. We got figures here. We have some other novelty stuff, light-up stuff, uh, a program booklet, and more plushies. Uh, so we actually have a lot of a lot of stuff we can go over in this video, but all this stuff is only available at the show. So really excited to share it with you in detail. We'll go through each item one by one. Um, really cool stuff, and I can't wait to share it. So we'll go ahead and get started with the most boring thing, which would be the shopping bag that everyone gets. So this bag is kind of like um, your typical uh, reusable bag. It's made out of uh, kind of coated plastic Tivic. Um, it's flexible. It's got two handles on it and of course the Jurassic World Live Tour graphics blue on the front and uh, big T-Rex jaws on the back. Uh, I really like these caution st stripes on it. It kind of reminds me of the new Primal Attack packaging. Um, but yeah, you get this bag um, regardless of what you buy. I think they always put it in a bag for you. So if you're at the show and you're buying something, make sure they give you this bag because it's a cool little collectible. Um, even if it's uh, just a bag, it's still very cool. They went, went all out with this one. The next item we're going to go over is the program booklet, which is really cool. It's huge, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, and we'll go ahead and get a better, closer look at it. So this program guide is huge. I can barely fit it in the camera. Um, it's just massive. It's much bigger than your average book. Um, but what's really cool is it's got this embossed detail on the front and back. So you can see that the T-Rex, um, the way it catches the light, it has all those scales popped out. And the back is blue and blue. She's the same way. Um, uh, that, that embossing technique on all of her scales. But inside of this book uh, are all of these big color photos. Um, I won't go through every page. I said I was, but I don't know. I don't think I can, but I <laughs> don't think there's time. But we can see that they have all the dinosaurs in the show. Um, they have some like games, nice blue render there. There's some games. I guess the whole thing is a board game too, because it came with a bunch of pieces. Um, it's, it's called Jurassic World Jackpot, but what I thought was cool about these game pieces was there's like little graphics like amber and uh, little baby raptors on there. Um, uh, Genie the Trudon is on there, so very cool. Um, but in the booklet itself, there's just lots of um, different renders of uh, the dinosaurs on the show. Let me see if I can show you some of the cool ones. Um, again, there's games in here. The Stegosaur looks cool. I mean, look at this Stegosaur. It looks a little different to me. The plates have a little bit of color on them. Um, that could be because of something they talk about in the show, which I will not spoil here. Um, I want to show you the Trudon page. There it is. So there's Genie. So you can see the Trudon there. It's, it's like a... You know, it's like probably a picture of the of the suit with the person taken out of it, but really cool. Lots of neat facts in there. They also have a making of part in the back of the book um, where they go over like how they made the show and different behind the scenes photos. They have the credits back there. So, um, yeah, it's kind of neat behind the scenes stuff along with all the other stuff in the booklet. So program guides always worth picking up when you go to shows like this. Uh, and this one was definitely worth picking up for me. All right, now that we got that stuff out of the way, let's get to the toys themselves. Um, the first thing I want to go over that you'll see a ton of if you go to the show is some of the light-up toys there. They had a bunch of stuff that you could get, um, but this is the one we picked up. I actually picked it up for my three-year-old. Uh, it was the coolest thing that I thought he would like, but they had stun guns and machetes and all kinds of cool Jurassic-themed stuff, uh, kind of role-play stuff. But what we got is this, uh, this light-up toy here. Um, it's pretty cool. You press the button and it spins around. Uh, again, my three-year-old loved it, but it's really cool. It's got a sculpted T-Rex on top. Um, that's actually a pretty nice sculpt, all things considered. It does look like a Jurassic T-Rex. You also have that Jurassic emblem in the middle as well. As for these little light-up things, I thought they were amber or something, or claws or fire. I don't really know what to make of them, but um, they do light up. and It does look pretty cool. Uh, again, perfect thing for a little kid depending on the age group, but lots of cool little techie details, caution stripes, stuff like that. I was really impressed with 
kind of the theming they went with for a lot of these, um, you know, more kid aimed toys. They still have definitely kind of a Jurassic World uh, theme park, dinosaurs in containment sort of vibe. So I appreciate that they put the effort into it, even for kind of uh, sillier toys like this. But yeah, this is my uh, my three year old, so I'll have to give him back to it. Uh, give him give this back to him after I make this video. But pretty nifty thing, um, pretty cool. Now the other thing I got for my other kid, I didn't buy all this stuff for me, I swear, was the plush Mosasaur, which is um you know when i saw pictures of this before i went to the show i knew i had to get it uh just because it's such a unique thing we see plushes of blue and rex all the time but not very many of moses are here and it's a really really nice plush too uh you can see it's got scaling uh like kind of scaling i don't know what you call this it's not printed because it's actually three-dimensional so it's kind of like molded into the soft fabric of the dinosaur or sorry aquatic reptile not a dinosaur uh, these little tufted ridges on top that really make it look like um, the big swimming creature it is. Uh, the, the tail fluke is really cool. It's actually part of the plush. The flippers, the underbelly. Oh, and of course, you got the Jurassic Park, or sorry, Jurassic World mark that all these toys have, which I hopefully will remember to go over when we look at them on video. Um, but, but it has that on here too, which is, you know, just lets you know that it's authentic merchandise, but you got the little glass eyes and uh, no open mouth with a bunch of teeth. No, you have this nice friendly face, which is why I thought it would be the perfect gift for my almost two year old. And he does love it, loves how soft it is. Um, but it's just a cool new version of Mosasaur. We don't get very many toys of it. So uh, I'll take anything I can get. And I think this is a, uh, you know, pretty nice quality. Color looks great, looks movie accurate in a cute sort of plushy way. So had to grab this one. Um, just because, it, you know, Mosasaurus just doesn't get that much love. So very cool little plush. Uh, there's tons of other plush there. There's ones of the Trudon, uh, Rex, Blue, all kinds of dinosaurs, Jurassic dinosaur plushes there. But uh, Mosasaurus is what we went ahead and grabbed uh, when it was our turn to shop. So next up, I want to talk about this guy. Very excited about this. This was actually a uh, snow cone holder. They had a couple different uh, options you could get for the snow cone holder. They had a cup. Um, they had a Rex head that was really, really cool that I was very tempted to buy. But in the end, I had to go with this one. Uh, I just loved how it had the Jurassic logo and the saddle on it. Um, it's very cool. I think it, that's the only Jurassic mark it has on it. But the figure, if you could call it that, or statue is very hard, hard plastic. I mean, this thing is solid. Um, so that kind of appealed to me too. If I was going to be paying 15 bucks for it, it better be substantial. Um, and it's got the, the bowl on the back so that you can put the snow cone in it, but I guess you could reuse it for a cereal bowl. Um, and it, it's got the, the sculpt on the face of a Jurassic World Triceratops. Definitely. Uh, the saddle is really nice with all the color. And yeah, it's, it's got painted toenails and painted horns and painted eyes. It's just, it's not too bad for, you know, basically a static statue um, that's um, ultimately holding food. Uh, but a very cool collectible. Uh, I don't know if a lot of kids would pick this up because it's not the T-Rex, but uh, I think it's going to be something that's, uh, you know, pretty sought after because it's, it is so unique and it does kind of play into the uh, riding a Triceratops moment that was in the Jurassic Park first film that got cut um, and it was also in Jurassic World. If you looked in the background, there was kids riding the Triceratops. So kind of a neat little ode to all that. Very cool, not necessarily a toy in scale of anything, but I really liked it, so I had to pick it up. Um, and I think a lot of you out there will like this one too. Just notice the buckle even is painted silver. So they didn't go too cheap on this. I think they did a pretty good job, all things considered, for a snow, a snow cone holder. So great job on that. All right. Let's talk figures, because as you can see, hopefully you've been drooling, uh, drooling over these the whole video. These figures are awesome, and I can't wait to go over them. We're going to go ahead and go over the gyrosphere first. Uh, this is a um, kind of a pullback, for, or not pullback, sorry. It's like a toy that you can push forward, and the gears keep it going. Um, that's really cool. Um, but what I really like about it is the detail. So we have other gyrosphere toys uh, when we're talking about Jurassic World. Obviously, we have a Mattel gyrosphere which I'll go ahead and bring into the video. Um, this one comes with Claire in the story pack. And it was our probably our best gyrosphere we've gotten so far, in my opinion. Uh, it does have um, the seats that the figures can sit in. It has a little bit of detail in, in terms of like 
the platform and like the, the, the little rollers on the side, but it, it opens up in half. You put the figures in, so that's kind of how it works. Let me see if I can get it back in here on camera. But this one from the show is a little bit bigger, and in some ways it feels a little bit more accurate. Uh, there's actually paint on the um, on like the the rolling part, the little silver balls that would make the ball roll. There's silver paint inside. The seats are a little bigger than the Mattel version. Um, so they can hold figures a little bit better, which we will throw a figure in here in a second. And it's got this Jurassic, uh, silver Jurassic logo right in the front of it too that I think is pretty nifty. Uh, it doesn't like gyrate like the Mattel one, um, but that's okay because it has this, which I think is probably the coolest part. The door opens. So you're not, um, you know, taking the whole thing in half. You're just opening it from the side. So that's really cool. Um, obviously, the Mattel one is a nice gyrosphere as well, but happy to add this one to the collection. Figure-wise, you can see that a figure still scales pretty well with it and can sit inside. Um, you can easily fit two figures in there as well. So don't know if they did that on purpose, but it certainly works well in this case. And again, it's bigger than the Mattel version. So if they look okay in the Mattel version, they're going to look great in this. Um, and it's got that nice rolling action as well. So very cool toy. I'm actually kind of surprised they made it because I feel like dinosaurs and stuff are such a hit, but they made this like very screen accurate gyrosphere that's Honestly, a pretty cool toy and does scale pretty well with the Mattel figures too. So you can't go wrong with that uh, when you take that approach. But very nice, very nice gyrosphere. There were some other vehicles there. Uh, that they had, oh, sorry, one more vehicle. They had a motorcycle. There's a lot of motorcycles on the show, but it was a little bit, uh, I don't know. Didn't really go with any of the other Mattel toys and didn't really look, didn't really look drastic. They just kind of bought something and put a Jurassic logo on it. It wasn't as cool as the gyrosphere. So I had to pick that up. So let's talk about these figures now. Um, we'll go ahead and start with Triceratops here. Triceratops. Uh, so all the figures with the exception of blue, I have to talk about the material of them. They're kind of like this soft rubber, kind of hard to think about what you could compare it to in terms of other Jurassic toys we've gotten, but it reminds me of some of the uh, kind of lizard toys I've got I've had since I was a kid, where they're kind of squishy and bendable without um, while still retaining their shape, and that is how I would describe this. It definitely has some sort of stuffing in it, um, but it's very soft and very like bendable, but it does keep its main shape. But the figure itself is awesome. I mean, this sculpt is probably the closest we've gotten for a Jurassic World era Triceratops ever in terms of a toy. Um, the, the, the mold itself is very screen accurate and the paint is great too because they kind of did this cool distressed wash over it that gives it a ton of detail. You can see all the scales and all the wrinkles and folds in the skin. Um, obviously the uh, toenails and the horns, every single horn on the frill is painted and the eye paint is just... I, I hate to like use kind of a, a silly word when we're talking about toy eye paint, but the eye paint is exquisite. I mean, you have uh, the white of the eye, uh, there's black, there's a, a little bit more color and a dot of white. And all the figures have this really nice eye paint that really um, brings them to life, which is kind of like in stark contrast with some of the Mattel figures that whose eyes are very simplistic and sometimes uh, painted on a little a little wrong, but I didn't see any of that on these figures. The, the eye paint is just really, really nice, um, very detailed. And uh, the figure itself is decent size. Again, I'll bring Alan Grant back in here. You can see that, uh, you know, this Triceratops figure in particular um, does scale pretty nicely um, with a human figure. I guess it could be bigger. Um, as far as the Mattel Triceratops, we can go ahead and get that in frame. It's a little bit smaller than that, um, but still kind of plays nicely with that if you were thinking of adding this figure to your Mattel herd. It, it, the only reason it would look out of place is because it almost looks more accurate than uh, than the Mattel versions due to the kind of detailed, intricate paint. But, um, you know, it's still very much a simple figurine with not a lot of articulation. So uh, you kind of have a trade-off there with all these figures not having that articulation. But the great mold more than makes up for it. Uh, and I just, I, I think they did a really good job with the paint too, all things considered. So really nice figure. Um, had to grab them all, but uh, the Triceratops is definitely um, 
stands out for being so accurate. So next up, we'll do Stegosaurus. So Stegosaurus, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just take these tags off because I feel like they're kind of getting in the way of me showing off these figures. Um, there's Stegosaurus. Um, again, uh, very accurate to the movie, very accurate to the show. They probably used the uh, Industrial Light and Magic scans to make these figures. It's pretty obvious. But again, the mold on this is great, and the paint just brings out that mold detail even more. I mean, the scaling detail on the bot sides of the Stegosaur looks great. The plates kind of have um, this um, vertical streaking on them that the paint really brings out. Different paint on the plates. Uh, toenails are painted. Uh, the spikes have some paint on them too. Same as the other figure. It's kind of squishy and soft, but still holds its shape and stands really well. Um, but what's incredible about this figure, which I'll get on camera, is the mouth is painted. The teeth are painted. The, the top and bottom row of teeth are painted. Little white teeth. <laughs> I mean, and the tongue. So, I mean, that detail, again, in these figures is just blowing me away, along with that eye paint I mentioned with the Triceratops. It's just... I mean, wow, the, the, the detail there is just really, really, really nice. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of blown away by all these figures in terms of detail. But the Stegosaur cracked me up because that tiny little mouth has tiny little painted white teeth. They did not have to go that far, but they did. Makes the figure uh, excellent. Kind of wish we got a baby Stegosaurus because there was one of those in the show. Um, and there's also another really cool thing with the Stegosaurus in the show that could have been in, uh, implemented in this figure. But I won't spoil it for anyone, but... Uh, I'm glad we got what we got. Uh, again, it's very film accurate and um, it looks great. Human, the human figure next to it, uh, again, it's on a little bit on the small side. I won't even bother putting a Mattel Stegosaurus in this review because um, it would dwarf this thing uh, in size, but uh, it's still close. It's kind of like a young Stegosaurus, I guess. But oh well, great figure on its own without fitting in with the Mattel line. Next up, we have Blue. This figure is different than the others in that it's much harder plastic, uh, sort of like your traditional dinosaur figure like Safari or Carnegie. It's, it's a little bit harder, but the detail is all still there. Let me get this tag off. Tag is off. Blue is free. So there's blue in all of her glory. Uh, this figure is awesome. The, the head just looks just like blue. Um, the paint detail isn't quite as intricate as uh, blue on film, but the blue stripe is there and the base paint color is there. Claws are all painted. You can see how thin her legs are. Um, this figure, more than any of them, really feels like a digital, like a, like a perfect digital copy of the, the, the design in the film. So they did a really good job with that. It stands really well. Again, the mold on this figure looks great, and they have that washed paint that brings a lot of the scale detail out. Uh, it is a little bit simplistic with just that blue stripe. I kind of wish they'd gone a little bit further with a little bit uh, more um, secondary paint applications, like maybe some white or lighter colors in here to give it a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more of a film accurate look. But really cool. Again, hard plastic, no posability. Uh, the tongue is painted. The teeth are all individually painted. Teeth are sharper than anything we have on a Mattel figure. So that's kind of funny, but really nice eyes, uh, just like the rest. Um, and the detail, again, is what makes this figure just really cool, even without the posability that I wish it had. If it had posability, I feel like this thing could give the Amber Collection a run for its money in terms of film accuracy. If the, even if just the, the arms and legs and jaw were um, kind of articulated, I think this would be like the definitive uh, Jurassic Raptor figure. Uh, so yeah, very impressed with that one. Does not scale at all uh, with the other figures. You can see it's huge compared to the Triceratops and Stegosaurus, as well as the T-Rex we'll get to in a second. And as far as humans go, we get Alan back in here. That is a big raptor. That is a huge raptor. So it uh, doesn't really, po doesn't really um, scale with uh, the Mattel figures. Might scale with the Kenner figure, which I don't have on hand right now. Might be a little bit better with the Kenner figure because they would stand up about this tall, but... Um, you know, for the purpose of this review, we'll, we'll stick to our Mattel comparisons and we won't make it complicated <laughs> bringing Kenner into the conversation. So, um, all right, let's put blue back. And without further ado, my favorite figure of all of these, the T-Rex. Let me get the gyrosphere out of the way for this because this guy 
need some space. This figure is awesome. This is the most expensive one at the show in terms of all these figures. I think at Chicago it was $28, so <laughs> kind of a lot of money um, for a figure that with no articulation. But the detail and the sculpt on this thing are incredible. I mean, this looks like a Jurassic T-Rex through and through. We see that with the Mattel figures, and this one's no exception. Uh, I love how they have all the scars painted. Every single scar line has paint on it on the sides of it on its neck uh really cool toenails are painted got a painted underbelly that drastic mark that's on all of these figures that I, of course i forgot to show on the other ones but it's on all these figures um the eye paint looks great head on um even on the sides it, it's it's uh got pupil detail that looks really nice the teeth and the tongue are painted figure stands uh, perfectly in this kind of iconic pose. You can see it with the volcano in the background. Uh, really, really, really cool. I just really am happy with this one. Um, oh, I should take the tag off so we can kind of appreciate her in her uh, in all her glory without being distracted by that gold band. Um, these tags just say Jurassic World Live Tour. They all say the same thing um, and have consumer information, but they're not they're not specific to what figure or plush or anything you buy. They're all the same, but there she is without it. Uh, she looks good from every angle, literally. Um, that nice brown base that we see on the Jurassic World Rexes looks even nicer here with that scar detail. Uh, but out of all these figures, this one's my favorite. Uh, it doesn't scale with blue. We've already talked about that, but it scales pretty well with the rest of them. I mean, the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus look great next to it, next to one another. And uh, same thing with the Triceratops. So um, at least these three figures sort of scale with each other. Um, ah, blue. Get her back up. Um, those three figures sort of scale with each other, whereas blue is sort of the odd one out. But I'll go ahead and take the tag off this one while we're talking. Um, but yeah, uh, the T-Rex is probably my favorite. It was the most expensive, but um, the screen accurate mold on that and the detail with the scars, it really just makes it an awesome figure. Even if it's static and doesn't have articulation, um, I'm not really missing it with this one as it's... I don't know. It's definitely going to be something that's just on my shelf that looks impressive and probably doesn't betray that it's made of soft plastic. It looks like it's some sort of hard resin collectible when it really isn't. Um, but just that detail makes it look so nice. So that kind of rounds out all of the figures um, and pretty much everything that I bought at the show. Uh, again, there was a lot of stuff to buy there and you can see more pictures of the merch booths on collectorastic.com. But this was the stuff that I felt like picking up and I'm very, very happy with everything I purchased. It was the only place you can get it is at the show. So I had to go big and I think I made some good choices with these uh, dinosaur figures, the gyrosphere, um, the snow cone cup, and I had to get a program. And of course those fun gifts for my kids were, you know, something I had to get too. So we'll always remember the show, but this stuff's going to look great with the rest of my collection so i'm so happy that jurassic world life tour went all out with the merchandise because it's totally worth getting um anyway i hope you enjoyed this review for more you can always go to collectjurassic.com for other reviews and toy news and uh until next time i'm tim and uh keep visiting collectjurassic.com